Let's talk about using child containers and I've got three examples over here of hero banners and they are exactly the same in terms of background uh, shading. We've got image, we've got some headings and we have a button as well. All three of them sit in their own hero parent container. Yes, we have a header as well, but you can ignore that. We've got three hero parent containers. Inside all of them, we have at least one child container. Some of them have more and some of them have less or none or just one at the moment. And I'm going to talk to you about how using the child container can be to your benefit, but also sometimes we rely on them a bit too much and you can get the same effect without having a child container. So the hero parent container, all of them are a full width and they have some padding in there of 1515. And then we've got a child container. The reason I have the child container in all of them is because I've added in a bit of curvature and you can see it here if I just go and get rid of that so we can see on preview, there's a bit of curvature on the edges there. And we've got a bit of padding, so it's away from the left and right parameters of the screen. So I've got it all kind of coming inwards. I hope that makes sense. If you try to do that on the hero parent container, you can sometimes get away with it. But the minute you start to use any margin or padding, it just won't look right. And a previous video I did about header problems will explain that further. Anyway, back to what we want to cover. We've got three um, parent hit containers as heroes. So let's go and look at the first one. Okay, here we have a child container and this child container contains a heading, heading and a button, but we don't have an image. Now, here's what we did. And I'm pretty sure you can work this out. When we go to the child container and we go to the style, we have a background color. So if I was to go and change that, you can basically see it changes the background color. It's not on the parent container. If I was to apply a color on the parent container, it now goes edge to edge. Does that make sense? What, why we had the child container? Let's just get rid of that. If we go back to the child container where we have the gray color and we go to the background overlay, here's where we've gone and added in our WebP image. It's 600 by 567. It's a WebP. It's only 23 kilobytes. Bulk resize photos.com. But don't forget, Elementor, I've got the image optimizer AI and all of that built in as well. And you can go and use that. Now, this image is set to be bottom right. So on our hero banner, it's basically where my face is at the moment. Uh, it's just set to be a default. There's no repeat, but it is set as a custom size. I'm going to undo that and I'm just going to show you what you might have done. And we'll come back to the custom in a moment or later on. This is what some people tend to do. They stick an image in and they go for cover. And that is OK if the image is panoramic or horizontal landscape, whatever. And, you know, depending on huge, big screens or small screens, you can get away with it. But you've got to make sure you are aware of that. This image is only 600 by 567 in width. So the minute you go and do a cover, it looks really, really odd. What you may also have gone and done is gone for contain. And you go, well, that's all right. The image fits and looks fine now. So, you know, there's not a problem. But let me show you why there is a potential problem. Let's go back to the child container and go to the layout. This is currently set to be justified content to the end. OK, so if I'd gone for middle or top, you can see what it's doing there. Let me just remove that there. But it's at the bottom. This image is just a background overlay image. It could be a background image or an overlay. It doesn't really matter. The same rules of physics apply here, but it is bottom right. If I was to now go into this container, OK, the child container, I currently have padding of 30. Let's change that to be zero. The image is still the same because it's a background image. If I go and change the padding to be 100, it is still going to sit there because at the moment, this child container has a height of 600. But here's where the problem is going to occur. So I just want to get you to appreciate and understand that. Yes, there is some padding. OK, we'll put it back to 30, but it doesn't change that background image because we have a set height. Again, you're going to go, what's the problem? Watch what happens when I start to now increase this. This is going to this is what happens. The more I increase the height, the bigger that's going to get because it's now custom fitting inside of there. And if I make it smaller, now the image gets a bit too small. So there is this potential whereby when you use like cover doesn't really work well here for the size of the image. But when you start to use contain, you maybe lose a bit of control on how big you want this to be. So let's go and set the height back to be 600. I don't want that image to be this big. I want that image to be smaller because right now it's very close to the top and the bottom because of the way the image is. There's not much leeway with it. So here's what you do. 
And you already saw what I did. I went to the child container, background overlay, and rather than using contain or cover, I set it to custom. So if it was a custom size of say something like whatever this is here, like that 641, we're back to almost where we were. But if I was to go in now, set this to be say 567, as to what I wanted it to be, that is now gives me more padding space. And if I was to now just go and set this to be uh, center right, that is so much better. In fact, it's more like what we have got further below. So hero parent container number one. Yes, there's a parent container. Yes, I have a child container. If you were not going to do like the border radius here and you're going to have it spaced away from the left and right, you wouldn't need this child container. Because I don't want anyone to start sticking in the comments going, well, you wouldn't have any child if you hadn't had that. Yeah, I know, but I'm just showing you an example here. So this could be your parent container as well. But if you've got your background image and you go and set it to be a custom width, like what I've done over here, rather than relying on just a contain or cover, you've got more control. And I could even do something like this. Because if I was to now go, oh, below, well, let's just pop it back. No, let's pop it to uh, 567 again. If I go back to my layout now and I start to shrink it, the image, well, gets cropped, but it maintains the width I set. And if I make it bigger, again, maintains the size of the image. So if you're going to have a background image, you can control it. Let's pop that back to 600. OK, now let's go to parent container number two. And this looks exactly the same, but it is built a little bit differently. We now have two child containers. Child container number one uh, is 50%. Uh, it's got a gray background, but it does not have a background overlay image like the other one, and it contains the headings and the buttons. Child container number two is set to 50%. By the way, the parent container is a row, so, you know, so that we've got the child container side by side. Again, 50%. This has a background uh, color. We could have added it in the image here as well. We could have done, and we could have added in a bit of padding or custom width. But instead, I just dropped in the image widget just so that you understand another way of doing it. Because I don't want you just to always do background images on the container because maybe you want to add in other widgets. Maybe you want to drop in another button or another heading into here. Eventually, this would make it easier to do by having the image widget. We don't have any width or max width, but by doing this, Again, I've got better control again with like how big is this image going to be, for instance. Let's just get rid of that value. So whereas above, we just had the background uh, overlay image because we had a background color. So I added it as an overlay. If you did want to keep them separated, you could do that here. And before you start to worry about, well, how does this all lock on the mobile? Just for parent container number one and two, this is parent container number one. If we go to the child container, it is still exactly the same. You know, we got the background image in there. You could swap it out for a smaller image if you want. And I've gone and set the width. So I've set the width. Let's just go and set that to be 300. You could go and mess around with the look of it. This is set to have the content justify to the bottom, which is why this is kind of sitting below the image. Like if you were to go middle and go top, that's what you're going to get. And of course, don't forget, you can go and set your height as well. If we go to parent container number two, because we're working with two child containers, there's child container number one, there is child container number two. Now, the reason why sometimes child containers can be a bit of a, a pain a little bit is that, can you see here, we've got the curvature and we've got it over there because that's what was set for the desktop. So if we go back to the desktop over here, this has got a curve over there and it'll, you'll see a curve just there as well. So what you got to do is in your mobile, you would go to your borders for your child containers, which are over here. No, are we in the right one? Yes, we're in the right one. You go to your style, go to your border, and then you will just make sure you modify that accordingly. So you would probably say, no, we're not going to have any on the mobile or just shift it around. So when it comes to using child containers, it's really versatile in that you could swap things around at any time. Just like on the mobile as well, you could rearrange the order, for instance, uh, just mess around with your borders again. So child containers gives you more versatility, OK, especially if you are going to add in further content or you wanted to rearrange items like you can make this image be smaller and you could position it to be at the top rather than justified down to the bottom. So that's parent container number one and parent container number two. Now, parent container number three is very, very different, but actually it's one of my favorite ways of doing it. So I'm now going to expand on this. And again, you have the container, one child container, because we've got it away from the left and right. 
If we expand, we now have the image, the heading, the heading, and the button. So whereas in parent container number one, the image was the background image, now the image, like parent container number two, is an actual image. So let's just go and look at the structure of this, okay? The parent container is set to be a column. We go to the child container which, where everything sits. Again, it is set as a direction to just be column vertical, verticular. And I've justified everything to be at the bottom. The advanced tab, we have 30 pixel padding. So if I do that, you can see what it does. Let's just pop the 30 back in. So how am I getting this to sit beside it even though everything is vertical? Well, it's really simple and easy to do. This image, okay, is just positioned to be on the right. If you do center, it would go center. If you go on left, you can go left. And I think you can hopefully look at this right now and see what I've done. I've moved it to be to the right. So it doesn't really matter how big this screen is. It's always going to sit there. By the way, I should also point out, and this is a little bit important, the child container is set to be a boxed width of 1,200. If I was to set this to be a full width, and I do that, the wider the image, the wider the screen is, that image is always going to be sticking to the right hand side. So by making it 1200 box width as what I've got over here, it doesn't matter if my screen is like, you know, a 20 inch or a 49 inch, I'm only going to be using a 1200 pixel spacing. And sometimes you do have to think about that, okay? Because when you start to do widescreen, like say you are now using the background. Uh, image or the background overlay for your container. If your screen is super wide and it's a full width, the image, the wording's going to be over there and the image is going to be right over there. So you've got to play around with it and start thinking about, well, do I want to maintain a certain structure? Unless you want your images and your wording to grow as well as your screen does, but then your wording or your text may look ridiculously big. So we've got our image and that's positioned on the right hand side. Then I've got my headings, and if I click, you can see the pink line, heading one, heading two, uh, sorry, heading one, heading two, and then we have the button over there. This heading has got a negative 180. If I was to get rid of that, you can now see that that heading starts here. If I go to the second one, uh, you can now see what it's done. They all start below the image. Because if everything was centered, they would just stack. But what I've done instead, and I'm just going to undo it so we can get it to be back how it was. I've got a bit of a overlap going on there. And you may again worry about this and going, oh, you know, do you really want to be doing that? Why not? I mean, this is just one child container. This could be your parent container without any child container. But again, you can control where the image and the wording is. So I've got a bit of an overlap going, but it doesn't look like an overlap, if that makes sense. Look, if I do that. Does that look like it's overlapping to you? It just looks like to the naked eye that, oh, there's two child containers there. And when you go over to the mobile, again, we don't have a problem because I've got my image, my heading, my heading and my button. And if I want to go to the image and go, oh, you know what, let's go and add in a bit more margin like that. I could do that. I could rearrange the order because don't forget, you have the facility to do a custom order if you want. Stick the image before the button or move the button to the top. I personally like working this way sometimes rather than over relying on too many child containers because I feel like I can rearrange things. However, if I knew I was going to have another button over here or another bit of text, I would resort back to the child container because then I've got more control over the placement. So I know I've contradicted myself. You could use child containers or not. And there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, it obviously matters with how much is being rendered and how much CSS code is written in the background, but there is no right or wrong answer. You do you, I'll do me, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Don't forget our $1 business packs. I'll see you soon.